Hi, in this video we're going to show you a bit about how to foam milk. Uh, we're going to go through the basic process of doing it and some tips on how to get it right. We're going to start with uh, the milk. The best milk for foaming is fresh and cold. Full fat milk will give you a creamier taste in coffee, um, but any milk will foam. It's the protein in the milk that uh, is involved in the foaming process. It's got to be fresh because those proteins are dying off all the time in the milk. In fact, when it gets nearly stale, you can smell it starting to go off, and that's because of the proteins are dying off. Uh, so the fresher you can get it, the better. It's also got to be cold because we want to get the air into the milk when it's cold. If we start introducing air when the milk's hot, then we end up with those big fairy liquid bubbles, which we don't want. So this is the procedure for foaming milk. First of all, the jug. Uh, you want a jug with nice, nice rounded corners uh, that helps the milk roll in there, which we'll show you in a minute. And you also want a nice spout on the jug as well for ease of pouring. That's an ideal shaped jug. There are various other ones, um, but this is the one I prefer when I'm firming the milk. So we add the milk to the jug. Uh, we don't want any more than about a third of a jug full of milk. Um, in this case, it's sort of just below where the spout is on there. Um, so that's the milk in the jug and we'll now go to the machine and prepare the machine for foaming. Now if your machine hasn't been used for a while, um, or the steam arm hasn't been used for a while, that will be full of water. Steam is condensed in there and um, we need to get rid of that water first. It'll be like that. In fact, we've just got steam there because we have been using it. So the next thing to do is pull the steam arm out and then we're going to put the jug right up there so that end of the steam arm is under the surface of the milk. Make sure it's under the surface of the milk otherwise when you turn the steam on it'll blow the milk all over you, the machine and any cameramen that happen to be standing near you. Uh, we want full power steam when we're foaming the milk which is easy on this machine because we've got this flip lever which will give us the full power. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that, push that lever up, so we've got the steam coming through the steam arm and then we're going to put the hand on the jug because we want to know what temperature the milk is at that we're foaming. Um, once we've got the hand on there, we're going to lower the jug a bit so that the tip of the steam wand is just at the surface of the milk and it'll be sucking bits of air into the milk. Once the milk is, feels warm, we're going to raise the jug up again and we're going to tilt the jug slightly. The idea there is that we're going to try and beat the air up that we've sucked in by rolling it around and using the steam to make the milk roll. If you read textbooks about it all, they'll tell you to put the jug at 40 degrees to the left hand side, tilted backwards a little bit. But the best way to do it is just look in the top, see what works for you, and put the jug in a position where it's actually rolling that milk round. Once we can't touch it anymore, it's got that hot, we're going to count to three and then we're going to turn the steam off. The temperature of the milk will be about right then. Another clue to when the temperature is right, you'll hear the note of it start to drop. So it'll be making a sort of shh noise and then it'll gradually start to go shh uh, and it'll carry on doing that until it then starts to rumble uh, where you're burning the milk. Just as that note changes and it starts to drop off that's when you want to stop it as well. So that's the procedure I'm now going to actually do it so jug right on the steam arm, steam full on, lower the jug, suck bits of air in I see the volume building up. It's warm now, I don't want any more air. Just tilt it to one side and roll the milk. Can't touch it anymore. One, two, three, turn it off. I'm then going to put the jug down. There's our jug of foam milk. It's at least doubled in size. And the next thing I'm going to do, most importantly, is to wipe that wand with our cloth. You're never too busy to miss this stage out. It must be done. And the next thing, I'm just going to put the steam arm back and just get a little blast. Um, by doing that, if any milk has got in the holes at the bottom there, it's just blowing them out and it keeps the holes clean. If you don't do that, the holes can gradually block up and then you struggle to get steam out. Now because I've put the milk down for a bit, I've rested it a second or two. There's one or two big bubbles in there and the milk will have drained off the bubbles, making them weak. So if I now tap it, they will pop and I just end up with the foam. next thing I'm going to do is spin it. Now spinning it, uh, you saw just now it was sort of dull looking on the surface, spinning it has now made it look really nice and shiny. And I keep spinning it, and what I've done there is I've mixed all the milk and foam together. 
so I don't need to actually use a spoon to hike the milk out, milk and foam out. Um, I just need to spin it like this and mix it all together. Um, our cameraman here has requested a hot chocolate, so we're actually going to use this milk to make a hot chocolate. Uh, we've already mixed the powder with a bit of water there, and I'm just going to pour this foamed milk straight into the middle. And there's this hot chocolate. Now if we just have a look at the foam we've got there, um, if I use a little spoon here and destroy the pattern, but I'll lift the foam out and you can see we've got a nice creamy foam. And that foam will stay with the drink right to the bottom. It's part of the drink. It's not a big lump of bubbles floating around on the top. And the same happens when you're making a coffee or cappuccino. You'll get the same effect. That melted ice cream sort of look about it. And that's how your foam should be. So, a quick recap. We want cold, fresh milk. Uh, we don't want any more than about a third of a jug when we start. We want to blow any water out of the steam arm. We then want to put the steam arm right in the milk. Full power steam, whether you're turning it or losing a uh, flip lever. And then we want to monitor the temperature. Suck bits of air in while it's cool. As soon as it gets warm, no more air. Lift the jug up and then use that steam to beat it up and just swirl it around. Once we can't touch it anymore, we count to three. We're also listening for that note to start dropping and turn the steam off. That's plenty hot enough. Um, there's another point to that actually, if you actually go further than that you end up with a milk that sort of loses its sweetness, starts to get thin and also smells a bit more like baby sick than actually hot milk. Uh, so please stop it when you get to that point. Then lastly we put the jug down, we wipe the wand on the coffee machine, give it a little squirt to blow any milk out of the holes, tap the jug to pop any big bubbles and then spin it to get all that foam and milk mixed together and just keep spinning it, you can have a chat while you're doing it as long as you stand there spinning it, it will keep it all mixed nicely and then just pour it straight into the cup and that's how you foam your milk That didn't last long did it? <laughs>